Good morning. In this video, I want to take the issue of internal security in a little more detail and deal with really the people who are phony believers in eternal security. These are the guys throwing out accusations. This guy's unsaved. That guy's unsaved. He can't be saved. They don't believe in eternal security. They think only, you have to believe exactly what they believe in order to have eternal security. Now, the fact of the matter is, a person's caught and involved in some stuff, he might not be saved. But he might also be saved. That's why, that's why we're not Lordship Salvationists. That's why we don't look at the is issue of their fruit. That's what Lordship Salvationists do to see if a person's saved. Now, I'm going to, uh, to uh, Galatians 5. And uh, according to an eternal security individual, person believes in eternal security, the, the sins I'm going to list here, the people are supposed to be saved because they're sins of the flesh. We believe in two natures. That person can go into the flesh and do everything I believe can. According, but some some term of security people, like say like Brian, for instance, oh no, you can't you can't reject the King James Bible and be secure, eternal security. I mean, you can't believe uh, reject Israel and be you don't believe in eternal security. Eternal security are for sinners. It's for sinners who go away from God, right to the point of sin unto death. That's what eternal security is. Now, for th to say that a person at the point of gospel healing is supposed to understand that is ludicrous. Yes, in the gospel, was one individual who uh, made a comment, it, it, is, it, 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 uh, it, it, it is not the gospel, but it's in the gospel. Well, that's true, but it's not the gospel. You'll find eternal security make an issue at the end, for instance, in Romans 8, where nothing can separate us from the love of God. You're saved in Romans 3. So by Romans 4, 5, 6, 7, all those things now are talking about how you got saved, the issue of faith, and being fully persuaded, five, justification, reconciliation, and then six, seven, eight, there you walk. And then by eight, you recognize that nothing can separate you from the love of God. But let's look at the, according to a, 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 a person who believes in eternal security, See, Lordship Salvation is to look at the, all these sins here. This person lost. He can't be saved. That's Lordship Salvation. They're looking at the fruit. The person who believes in eternal security is not looking at the fruit. They're looking at what the person believed at the point of salvation and said, well, this person could be Lord or he might be saved and in a sin state. Now, the works of the flesh, verse 19, 519, are manifest, which are these. And he's talking to saved people here in Galatians. Not lost people, saved people. With two natures. And that's what the issue of the incest was in, in the First Corinthians 5 with the, uh, uh, and then the uh, person who was turned over to Satan. He was involved with something even the heathen don't, didn't, didn't do. He's messing around with his, his stepmother. And that, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, so we're talking about total security. Well, that guy can't be saved. You know, Lot can't be saved. He had uh, incest with his two daughters. You don't believe in total security then. Uh, now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, Christians can do that, fornication, Christians can do that, uncleanness, Christians can do that, lascivious, Christians can do that, idolatry, that's a false religion. Oh no, he must be lost in. He's gone, he's gone into, uh, you know, all these uh, uh, paganism, atheism, he's got, he can't be saved, he can't be saved. He says, he, idolatry, Christians can do it. Witchcraft, holy cow. Christians can be involved in witchcraft. Saul, Saul's a Christian, of course, but he's a but he's a safe man. He got involved in witchcraft, and I believe in eternal security in the Old Testament. I don't believe I lost his salvation. He got involved in witchcraft and he got him killed. Hatred. Christians hate all the time. Variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Now, according to these guys, he every time a heresy pops up somebody with somebody else, he's lost. He's lost. He's, he's, he's in heresy. He doesn't believe this. He doesn't believe that. He doesn't believe this. The only thing he has to believe to be saved is in the blood atonement and his trust in Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. If somewhere along his life he believed that, he is saved no matter what happens afterward and what God is dealing with him afterward, you know, what the board of sin to death. That's what eternal security believes. A lot of these people coming on here don't believe in eternal security. They're really lordship salvationists. They really believe they're looking at the fruit and say, well, that guy can't be saved. He can't be saved. He has heresy. He's got a heresy there. He can't be saved. Oh my God, he's lost. He's a heresy. He doesn't believe in the Trinity. He doesn't believe in this. He doesn't believe in, he doesn't believe in eternal security. He's got to be lost. Envyings, murders, 
drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. What do they lose? The inheritance. They lose their inheritance. They lose the rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And of course, you know, they're going to be dealt, dealt with in time if they're involved in these stuff. But the walk is involved in 6, 7, and 8. The first part of salvation is dealing with the penalty of sin. The second part of salvation is dealing with the power of sin in your life. That's where eternal security comes in, knowing that, that you have two natures. The point of salvation, that's not the gospel. You don't have to believe in eternal security at that point. You gotta learn about eternal security. You gotta learn about the source of salvation. That's a crucial area that you know you have salvation. And you understand why. And then you're, you're applying the uh, the gospel to your life. You reckon yourself dead to Christ, dead to the world and alive to Christ. And that's you live the resurrected life. That's what uh, Colossians is talking about. You live in heavenly, that's where you put you put yourself, because that's what God considers you. Those are all you know, those are all part of the walk. But you have a lot of people come on here now saying, point that hell, this guy's out there. He's going to hell. This guy's out there. He's going to hell. He might be going to hell. But not because of that particular heresy. It's because he hasn't believed in the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the issue of why persons go to hell. If a person has believed in that gospel somewhere along that lot time, he is saved. That's what we believe with eternal security. These guys who preach eternal security, well, I believe eternal security, but he's going to hell. You know, he, he can't be involved in that sin and go to heaven. It's not eternal security. It's not eternal security. You just figure out the sins you don't like and say, and he got the whole list here and say, ah, he must be going to hell. You know, he believes in, he's in a heresy. He rejects that. He rejects this. He rejects the pre-tribulation of rapture. He must be going to hell. That guy's going to hell. This guy's going to hell. And then rationalize because, well, he couldn't believe in the gospel because that, you know, that would make sense because, uh, you know, the gospel is sim for simplicity and simple, it's just laid out clearly in the first four chapters of Romans and it's not an issue about eternal security. The person doesn't have to believe eternal security and in eternal security as part of believing because it's not an issue. It's not an issue. It's taught later. It's taught later. Now, I'll tell you who's making a big deal about this issue is the crossless gospel because they go to, uh, to John and they make the promise of eternal life as being the issue. And, that's, and they get, get rid of the cross. That's, that's, that's what's making the bishop of eternal, uh, make a big issue of eternal security being part of the gospel. That's what's making that, that an issue there, because they make the promise of eternal life the point of salvation, not believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and trusting Him for your salvation. They make believing in a promise that Jesus Christ gives eternal, eternal life to all those who, who trust in Him. And then that becomes the basis of it, and they say, well, you know, the promise of eternal life means, you know, you, you know that's the issue, then you can't lose it. That's not the gospel. That's a crossless gospel. And that's, they re-emphasize, you can take a truth, and when you front-load it to the gospel, you corrupt the gospel. The only thing a person is required to believe at that point, when he can't, the only thing the Holy Spirit reveals to him, is the issue of the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood atonement, and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. That's the only issue that an unbeliever can grasp at that point. He's not ready to handle the fact, well, I can't lose it, I can't lose it, but he's not thinking about losing it and losing it. It's not, it's not an issue. And then later on, he might get snared up in other, other things. The only people who teach eternal security as a basis, once saved, always saved, are the Baptists. So what these guys are saying is the only people who are saved are the Baptists. Because they're the only people who teach eternal security. You know, every major denomination, Protestant denomination, uh, teaches a, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, some way to lose the salvation. Calvinists don't preach uh, eternal security. They teach perse perseverance of the saints. That's not eternal uh, 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 security. And of course, the, the Armenians, they believe you have to use free will to, receive, to accept Christ as your personal Savior. You can use free will to lose uh, your, uh, your salvation. And they don't th see any contradiction with grace there. They say you appropriate grace by free will and you can, you can reject grace by free will. And they see it as, uh, as we reject grace, you can get a point of, we say it's sin unto death. They say actually losing salvation. Now they're wrong. But that's not part of the gospel. And these guys come up now, and not but little Pharisees, who all want to point to everybody else and point that this guy can't be saved, that guy can't be saved, he can't be saved, I don't see. You know, I mean, that's ridiculous. You don't know. That's the typical thing of a lordship salvationist. Oh, I, I, the guy, guy can't be saved. You know, he wouldn't be doing that if he was, if he was really saved. That's fruit inspection. Now, you can think he's not saved. 
testimony might be shot. Yeah, if a guy's involved and leaves like the Sims, he, 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 he looks unsafe, certainly. But so do a lot. So do a lot. We teach you an idea that if a person professes and says, guys, you can't come up to you, I said, what, what, how did you get saved? What did you believe? I believe in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and I trusted in him for my, as a personal Savior. What are you going to say? Well, you've got a sin problem then. You've got a problem you're dealing with your flesh. You need to get out of your flesh. Now, if he says he was trusting something else, okay, he's not saying, you know, yeah, well, who knows whether he's saved or not. Probably not. But if he says he gives you a profession of a good gospel, says, yeah, I trust, the only thing I trusted when I got saved was that, that belly, that, you know, Christ died for my sins on the cross, rose again from the dead, and I trusted in him as my personal savior. And he's involved in all kinds of weird stuff, just like the guy who caught incest. So, yeah, he was a saved man. He was a saved man. The Corinthians were all involved in all kinds of bizarre stuff, including idolatry, you know, other, you know, this, uh, nonsense. But these guys today, who purport to believe in eternal security, they're the first ones to start throwing stones at people. They can't be saved. Look at that heresy. Look at that. No one can believe that and be saved. Get out of here. You don't believe in eternal security. Just like Brian is showing, he don't believe in eternal security because if he had believes in a changed life, that means you're going to get a chance to persevere into the saints. That you're going to get, you're going to hear a clean life before you end up, you, before you, you, you die. But eternal security means you can reject God right to the point of sin unto death. Very few people believe in that. Very few people believe in that. The sin unto death, the idea that you can go right, you can reject God, resist God right to the point of sin unto death. That's what the death is referring to in Romans 8. Where Martin has wrong. Martin recently has that wrong. He thinks that death, is, and he says this, well, you people think it's just only physical. That's exactly what it is. It's a physical death. It's not a spiritual death. You can't die spiritual. That's, you have eternal life and that's spiritual. You can't die spiritual. So they, that's, a total, that's totally correct. That's why Romans... Uh, the uh, end of Rome, uh, Romans 8 is talking about. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing. Anything. Even you. So, that's it. But that's growth. That's understanding. And these people who purport to believe eternal security, we really don't. We really don't. Heresies is part of the sins of the flesh. So you see a guy teaching heresy, could be in the sin of the flesh. He could be a saved Christian who's teaching falsehood because that's a sin of the flesh but boy, boy boy as soon as a guy pops up with a heresy boy there'd be these these so-called believers in eternal security boy they're, they're picking up this these guys this guy can't be saved let's hang him let's burn him at the stake <laughs> so a bunch of phonies they're a bunch of lying phonies you don't put when you they find something they don't like or someone they don't like they're ready to just say ah he's on this unsaved nonsense is blown it's not even relevant it's not even relevant to the issues. This guy's on So what is on say? He's talking about a doctrinal issue. Oh, you know, he's on saying, based on say, you know. So, so what? So you don't know. If you believe in eternal security, you really can't say. You really can't say for sure. Unless the person comes up and says they believe the false gospel somewhere. So that's how I got saved. I believe, you know, you have to add works. You have to have, sac you know, sacrament. Of oh, course, you didn't believe the gospel. If the guy comes up and says, yeah, I believe, well, I was just trusting Christ as my personal Savior, and I trusted him to pay for my sins on the cross, and my eyes to death, and he rose again from the dead. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? <laughs> That's the true gospel. Well, he's teaching heresies. Okay. He's in sin. That's what eternal security is about. Believing people who are in sin are still saved. Lordship salvationists, they say that, though. That's the ironic part. Oh, you can go off in sin. But then they'll say they know, who's, they, they know who's saved and who's not. But they, they admit that person, oh, that person can go off and sin, but he'll come back. Then you don't know who's saved. Idiotic. Idiotic. But this is the hypocrisy of people who want to backload. You grow years in, 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 in spirituality, people have been, and all of a sudden you want to project yourself back into a person who's just getting the gospel, doesn't know any doctrine, doesn't know anything. All he's being told is by the Holy Spirit. He's dead spiritually. The Holy Spirit has come and illustrating, uh, illuminating these things to him, and you're expecting him to be, well, if you were saved, you, you, you believe in eternal security. It's not an issue when you get saved. The issue is you're going to heaven. You're not thinking about, well, could I lose this and could I lose this tomorrow? That's a, at that moment, you, you know you're going to heaven. That's the issue. When you believe that, you're saved at that moment. Then the issue comes in where you know, you know, is this going to be taken away from you? And, you have, you know, and then, you know, you know, this is your walk and this is stuff that's going to happen to you. You know, you're going to be, you know, this is permanent. 
That comes after you're saved. Now you have a human spirit. You can understand doctrinal issues other than the gospel. These guys who pretend to be believers in eternal security, they don't believe it. They don't believe it. You start condemning people to hell, right off the bat tells you you don't believe what the scriptures say about sin. You no, know, say so, I mean a person in a sin state like Lot. I say, oh yeah, that person that must be he must be going to hell. That's that's exactly what your salvation is teaching. They're checking that you know thing, even though even though the hypocr hypocrites themselves and say, well yeah, that person could fall into sin. We well, don't know then. MacArthur said that. He said he, he couldn't tell that guy was saved or not. But then they'll, they'll get up there and, oh, yeah, you can't be saved if you doing that. And these guys are phonies. They're nothing but phonies who just want to make an issue out of, any, of, of something because they don't understand the true gospel. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an event. The problem with other, other, the other religions, the other, the, uh, the other denomination, they make it a process. And that's why they think you can lose it because it's part of an ongoing process whether it be the Armenian way or the Calvinist way. Cal Baptists who believe in something, we make it in a one-time single event. If you believe it's a one-time single event, whatever the guy does after that, he can still be saved. He doesn't lose his salvation. The issue is, was he saved at one time in a one-time event? And you don't know. You don't know. Only God knows. And that's the issue. And when, you, when someone gets up and says, I know that guy is definitely unsaved. When he, and that person is professing a true gospel belief and what he believes in. What they're doing is they're, show, they're saying they're saying the same thing the Lordship Salvation is saying. That person can't be saved because if he was saved, he wouldn't do that. Even though, again, the hypocrites, because they admit that, uh, even Lordship Salvation admit that. Oh yeah, you, you can still sit. It's like Brian said. You can still sit. You can grow slow and go long. They reject, they reject the sin of death. And the Bible will come up and say, oh no, I believe in son to death. Well, then you don't believe in a change of life. Because that's the whole point. You don't change your life. You want this son to death. So, that's the issue. So, the eternal security is a truth. Don't deny it. But it's not a truth you're responsible to believe at the point of salvation. The only truth you, you're, you're responsible to believe at the point of salvation is that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, rose again from the dead, and you're trusting him for your personal salvation. That's it. That's it. You add anything else onto that, you've confused and muddied up the waters. And that's what Stephen Anderson is doing with his little going around with his, uh, you know, uh, witnessing. Before the person was even saved, he says, now, now I want to tell you, before, you know, uh, okay, you get to the gospel, and, and now, now you can't lose it now, you know, if I give you this book now, you know, I'm not going to take it back. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> you get the guy ready to get saved. Yeah, well, I want to, you know, Okay, what do I do now? Oh, before you get saved now, let me tell you now, you can't lose it. Yeah, that, that, that's allowing the movement, moment to you know, uh, slip away. Don't let these people deceive you. Salvation is very simple. It was made for be simple. It was made for it to be childlike and understanding. It was never meant to be complicated. And eternal security is something looking forward. You're in that moment of salvation. You're in that moment. You're not thinking about the future. You're thinking about now. I am going to heaven now. That's the issue. And that's it. Now I'm on the way to heaven. Whether uh, the issue of losing it is not even coming into your mind. The issue is the only thing is, yeah, I, that's it. I got it. I got it. That issue of assurance, and now you understand. And the guy comes down and says, now you understand. Let me tell you, let me explain about being internal secure. And you go to you know, Romans 38, 838, explain, nothing can separate you now. But he's going to have to learn that. He's going to have to get that grounded and rooted. Because the sin nature is going to be popping up on him, and he's going to be told constantly, well, you can't, you can't be doing that sin and be saved. You can't be doing that sin and be saved. That's what's going to happen. Eternal security is something you have to learn. You have to learn. You have to trust in it. The whole scripture, the scripture have to come into you, and you have to really be confident, get rooted and grounded in that. Because your sin nature is going to pop up, it says here in, 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 in Galatians, is fighting against your thing. And you have to tell, that's why people are so confused. They don't understand the two natures. They don't understand why they're doing sin. Why, oh, I'm saved. Why am I still sinning? And so they get, they get confused. Those are saved people confused about that. Because they're not taught about eternal security. But are they lost? No, they're not lost. They just don't understand eternal security. And they want, they want they, 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 there was no expectations for them to understand eternal security at the point of salvation. That was just was a moment in time to get saved. Not talking about well, about, you know, make sure you, you know you have to stand, you can't lose it. 
person's the person has to get it first. He has to get that salvation first before he can grasp the fact now he can't lose it. He should forgive them all the things about the person of Jesus Christ, what he's done for you, the position you in Christ, the two natures, all those things that to be taught. But people have learned this, now want to pose it back on there like it's so simple. Oh, that's the simplest thing in the world. Not for a person who just got saved. They learn that. And while most people never learn it, they, because they, they, can't, they can't grasp the idea of the sin nature. They have a hard time with that. So why am I doing this? I must be, I can't, I must not be saved. That's why people can constantly get re-saved because they, they don't understand the issue of sin and what's going on and how to deal with their sin nature and crucifying the flesh and living in the resurrected life. They don't understand any of that. They're taught that. But to put the idea of the onus in there, that's eternal security is a requirement of the gospel. If someone doesn't believe in eternal security, then he must not have been saved. It's ludicrous. Ludicrous. Because what they're doing is adding on a doctrine a correct Bible doctrine onto the gospel that's part of the gospel inside the gospel that, you, that develops from outside the gospel as you learn about the cross and the resurrection of life and, and the fact that you know, you're in union with Christ. That comes out of that. But at the initial point, the only thing you're looking at is the effects of the cross on, your eternal, uh, on the eternal life, the fact that you now have eternal life. The issue of losing it and, or keeping it is not the focal point at that point. The issue is getting it. Amen. Thank you.